just struck I don't know why he felt compelled to share what he's talking about his wife pregnant and having trouble hormonal imbalances triggering mental illness and he seemed visibly stressed on his head. And it sounds like you're up against it as an outbreak you and your family. So I'd like us to pray for him. Keep him in. I know I'm not naming names, but yeah. So just a man who's struggling with his teenagers and his wife, right? Yeah, family. Wife, yeah, she's pregnant again and struggling with the pregnancy and the one that's being triggered by it. So. We will pray for him. God knows his name. And one more thing. Yes, sir. This guy right here, Brother Doug, pray for healing uh, his skin um, cancer that took off his nose. It's uh -huh. that stays clear. Absolutely. Um, nothing else reoccurs. Please. Doug had a little skin cancer removed from his nose. We'll pray that that's all it is. <clears throat> what else we got? I saw a hand back here. Allison? Hi, yeah. My surgery that my niece Mary had on Wednesday went well. Goodness. She's recovering. Um, she's still getting better. She's still getting better. She's still getting better. She's still getting better. So Mary's surgery went well. She's recovering well. Betsy? Satish fell this morning at Dodge Park and hit his head and his side and so we are going to x-ray him. Mm. And Judy Prolady is under the weather. He's friends for both of them. So Satish, you fell again. Um, keep Satish in your prayers and for Judy who's under the weather like me. Mary? My sister is she but What's your sister's name, Mary? Adishiba. 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 Who had back surgery. Kurt, turn me down just a little more because there's a ring. What else, Jim? Yeah, my wife, Kelly, whose recovery is still going very slow. And a woman who's not from our church named Michelle, who has some health issues and some family struggles. Kelly recovery and Michelle with some health issues and family struggles. Tracy? Wonderful. What's your parents' first names? Michelle and Skip, 50 years. Wonderful. Lois? Continued prayers for um, Terry Chadbourne. Continuing into health issues. Brian. John, uh, just a few here. Praise and prayer request, please, for uh, the closing of John, uh, Jimmy's mom's house uh, on the 31st of this month. Bill Long Hall, mixed emotions as that house has been in the family for her whole life, and her sister's whole life. And then uh, my boss's uh, good friend, he's, uh, his name's Paul. He's got, I guess, 90% of blockage of three arteries of his heart, so stenting is not a uh, viable option. So open heart surgery on Monday, tomorrow. Let's pray for uh, him, please. Okay, so for uh, Jody's mom's closing of the house, for Brian, heart surgery, and one more thing, Brian? Uh, and then uh, the last thing is uh, my boss's mother's been in and out of re uh, rehabilitation with a bro broken hip and some kidney uh, infections and things. So this is Paul's mom? No, this is my boss's mom. Oh, sorry. <coughs> you know God knows all this, so. No, absolutely. I saw a hand over here. Uh, Elaine. Wow, how about that, huh? Bev and Ted Strom, 71 years. Anybody going to top that? I mean, hopefully you will. But I mean, anybody going to top that? You guys have already celebrated 85 years of marriage. Doug. Thank you for nursing homes. So many beautiful people. We've met some beautiful people there since our mom was gone. So many wonderful people that help those places. Yeah. 
pray for nursing homes and therefore pray for Inez too as she's there. All right, anything else? Let's bring ourselves and our prayer requests to our God. Let's pray. Dear God, we come humbly before you today. You are great. We are frail. We are human. You are eternal. You are omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent. You are so great beyond what we can even comprehend. And yet, Lord, you're so close and so gentle and so just present in our lives. Thank you for your greatness. Thank you for your presence. Lord, before we pray for any other person on this list, we bring ourselves to you. Lord, we have needs. We don't often speak those out loud, though perhaps we should. But Lord, there's things going on in our lives. There's hurts, there's pains, there's emotions, there's things we need your help. So Lord, we begin our prayer this morning with a moment of silence in your presence to simply lay ourselves down and to be in your presence. Lord, hear our prayers. And even if we can't get the right words out, Lord, hear us. I pray that you would be with us, Lord. And Lord, to our own needs, we add these needs of others that have been mentioned. We pray for the Collins family and their grief, and those of us who grieve along with them. Bless the service that will take place here tomorrow morning, Lord. Uh, may it be a place of grace and of healing and of your comforting presence. Thank you for the hope of the resurrection that we have as Christians. Be also with Dawn as she mourns the passing of her mom. May she too be comforted by the hope she has in you. Be with Larry and bless him in Florida. Be with Liv and Satish as they recover from their falls. Be with the friend of Chris who um, is concerned about his family and his wife, Lord. That prayer could be echoed by almost all of us. I pray, Lord, that you would give us patience, give us wisdom and perseverance. Help us in all the struggles we have within our marriages and within our families. We pray for Doug and, and pray that you would watch over him as he recovers from his small cancer surgery and pray that that would be the end of that. We pray for Mary as she had successful surgery and recovers. Uh, we pray for Judy as she's not feeling well and I will lump myself in there and everyone else who has a cold. We pray for Mary's sister as she recovers from back surgery. For Kelly as she continues to recover from pneumonia. For Michelle and the health issues that she has and family struggles. Um, we pray for Terry as he recovers. We pray for Jody's mom's house as they try to settle the estate after her passing. Pray for Paul and his heart issues for Brian's um, boss's mom. We rejoice with um, Bev and Ted in their 71 years. And Lord, we rejoice that there are lots of caring people, both within our church community and our wider community. And thank you for systems of good care, Lord. Um, thank you for nursing homes and, and good people um, who serve in all kinds of capacities. And Lord, where there's trouble and problems there, Lord, we pray that those could be healed and fixed so that um, our seniors and those who need extra care uh, would be truly cared for well. Father, I know there's a couple things on this list I probably forgot or misspoke, but humbly, I confess that you know everything. Lord, you are our God and you hear our prayers. 
for those who've been spoken in this room, for those who've been spoken by me, for those who have whispered in the quiet of their hearts, hear our prayers, Lord. For those who need help, give them help. For those who need healing, we pray for healing. For those who are facing difficult decisions, uh, give wisdom and open and close doors and light the right path brightly and move us on it, Lord. For those who um, need provision, provide for their needs. For those who are discouraged and down, lift them up, Lord. For those who are so down and discouraged or perhaps shackled by other chains like addiction, set them free, God. And Father, for those who don't know you, for those who are still in the darkness or waffling in doubt, Lord, bring them to yourself and may they be embraced by you and your spirit and receive the life that is truly life. Lord, there are other things we could pray for, for our nation, for the larger body of Christ of which we are a part, the Church of Jesus Christ with a capital C. Lord, all of these things we lift before you. And we pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Our first reading is from John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32, found on page 1,663 of your pew Bibles. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And our second reading this morning comes from the second book of Timothy, chapter 3, uh, verses 14 through chapter 4, verses 5. Second Timothy, chapter 3, beginning with verse 14. But as for you, continue in what you've learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you've heard it. And how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great multitude of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you, keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, discharge all the duties, of your ministry. Here ends our second reading. Our last reading is from 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 15 and 16, and is found on page 1890. But in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. So today, in between the scripture readings and the sermon, we're going to sing a little song. Some of you know this. Uh, It just seems appropriate for today. You don't have to stand. The words will be on the wall in front of you. Um, Ancient words, ever true.
that song. So this month we've been talking about stewardship. Um, thank you, Peter. We were talking about stewardship and um, in all of its many forms. Uh, everything that God has given you is from God. Every, everything is God's and he's blessed you. We've talked about this all month. It's actually been a very practical, I think very helpful month of sermons. And I encourage you to go back on YouTube if you miss some. In all honesty, I don't always say that. But being good stewards of our time. God gives us our days and our time. And to use that wisely because the days are evil is important. To be good stewards of our talents. Who God made you. The gifts that he's given you. The personality he's given you. The, the just natural abilities and, and the spiritual abilities he's given you. Are gifts from him and you're to be a good steward. And use them. As we've been saying all along, for the glory of God and for doing good to others. Same thing with your treasure. Everything is God's. How much of what you own belongs to God? All of it. He's entrusted it to you to use for your enjoyment and the blessing of others and for his glory. And then we get this week to the last week. Truth. God has entrusted us with the truth. And I want to spend just a few minutes. Uh, I see we've already kind of eclipsed 11 this morning. I always say I'll try to be brief, but, you know, it's relative. I'm briefer than some ministers, longer than others, but just pay attention. I want to talk this morning about truth. God has entrusted his word of truth to us. Those ancient words. Stop laughing at me while I talk. Those, I will try to be brief. Pay attention, though. God has entrusted those words of truth to us. And he's called us to be stewards of his truth. Of all the things that God has given us. Our time, our talent, our treasure. There's not one of them that I'm more passionate about than this. Being good stewards of the truth. In fact, we are guardians of the ancient truth of life. It sounds pretty cool, right? It's like being guardians of the galaxy, right? Guess what? It is pretty cool. In fact, as our culture drifts more and more away from the gospel, away from the word of God, I see our role like this more and more. We are holding on to ancient truth that has been the bedrock of our culture, that's the bedrock of our country in many ways, that our culture has drifted from, and we're going to hold on to it, and we're going to hold it out to the people around us. Because we believe, we're not just into old things, we believe these ancient truths hold the secret to life. So let's talk for a minute about truth. We kind of have a funny relationship with truth, but it almost seems arrogant for us to say we know the truth. That kind of goes against our postmodern sense. Of, Nobody knows the truth. That's your truth. That's my truth. It's all kind of relative. But God has entrusted us with the truth. And the truth comes from Jesus, right? What is it that Jesus said? He said, I am the way and the truth and the life. We are followers of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ who said he was the truth. And as his followers, we are to hold on to the truth that he's given us. Now, one of the other funny relationships we have with truth is we always think the truth is negative, right? It must have to do with, like, the legal system. You want the truth? You can't handle the truth kind of thing, right? Or someday the truth is going to come out. It always seems like a negative thing. But in Christ, the truth is not a negative thing. Think of the first passage that Jack read for us this morning. If you hold to my teachings, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. What does the truth bring us? Not consequences, not bad news. The truth will set you free. The truth brings freedom. The truth brings life. This is a wonderful thing that God has called us to hang on to. And what is that truth? Here it is, simply put. I'm going to clear my throat here. <clears throat> here it is, simply put. For God so loved the world that he gave his son. 
that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. That verse is so popular because it's kind of the gospel in a nutshell. The truth is this. You're not alone. God created you and God loves you. And God saw the brokenness and destructiveness of the world and God sent his son. And he said, look, I'm going to make it easy for you. There's a significant problem here on the earth. And I have the solution. And if you will believe in my son Jesus Christ and accept him as Lord and Savior, I will wash away all your sins, all your darkness, all your filth, and you will no longer perish in it, but you will have eternal life. That is the core of the truth we believe in. And that truth, my friends, and many of you know this, maybe not all of you, but everyone should know this, that truth will set you free. That truth will set you free from guilt and shame and condemnation, and it will set you free on the day of judgment that you will not be condemned, but you will receive the crown of eternal life. Not because you've earned it, for in this economy you don't earn anything, but you were gifted it through Christ. It is such good news, and it's so true. And it's the truth that we've been called, brothers and sisters, to hold on to. We are guardians of this ancient truth of life. Now, let's go on to what um, Paul says to his young pastor that he was mentoring, Timothy. <clears throat> he reminds Timothy, continue in what you've heard, become convinced of, because you know from who you've learned it, and how from infancy you've known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through Jesus Christ. What is the bedrock? I mean, those of you who've been here know we say it all the time. It can't be said enough. The bedrock of truth that we hold on to is in the Holy Scriptures. Just like we sang, ancient words ever true, changing me, changing you. This is our bedrock. This is where we believe the words of Christ have been written down and preserved from age to age for us. And we study the Word of God and we listen to the Word of God so that we can stay on track with God. For all Scripture is God-breathed, useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, training in righteousness, so the servant of God may be equipped for every good work. <coughs> Another good throat clear. You with me? God's Word teaches us, sometimes it rebukes us, corrects us, trains us, so that we can be equipped to do the work that God has called us to do. The word is foundational. Now let me just say a word here before we go along. Handling the word of God requires wisdom. It requires humility. It requires the Holy Spirit living in you to truly understand it. When we miss those things, we misuse the word of God. This analogy I was thinking of this week, I had a friend, a friend whose wife worked for a Scots fertilizer company, right? You've heard of them. And I was thinking of that. I thought, you know, fertilizer's important, right? If you want to have a lawn, I've been trying to grow grass, it's not working well, probably because I'm not reading the instructions right. Um, you want to, you got to prepare the soil, lay down the fertilizer, you got to get good seed and the right seed for the shading and the environment. There's a whole science behind it that Scott's lawn chemicals has, right? So this person was a salesman for Scott's. They were really into it. So imagine if they were so into it, they forgot that the purpose of Scott's fertilizer and grass seed was actually to grow grass, right? You can be a scientist in all of it, but if you forget what it's all about, you lose the big picture. Many people can be that way with God's Word. It's a means to an end. We study God's Word, we hold on to it because it tells us about the living God. And it tells us about our living selves and the relationship we can have with God, a living relationship through the Holy Spirit that is not in the Word as much as it is in life and in us through the Holy Spirit, if I said that right. Um, the Bible is a means to an end. Jesus said of the Pharisees, you study the Scriptures and you miss the point. You study the Scriptures, but you forget the Scriptures are saying, look to me and look to the Messiah and be saved, and you miss the whole point. 
So, as we study God's word, we do so wisely and with humility, realizing we're not just to be great scientists and scholars of the word, but realizing it's a means to an end to equip us and train us and rebuke us so that we can walk with God and we can do the good, grow the grass that God has called us to grow. In the presence of God, of Christ Jesus, who is judged with living in the dead, in view of his appearing in his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, encourage with great patience and careful instruction. To me, this whole passage is a charge to us as a church. Make sure whoever is pastor here, whoever is teaching and preaching, is preaching the word of God. Not themselves. They, you know, you, I know personality comes through, but not themselves and not just wild stories or myths and all this kind of stuff. The Word of God, guard that. This church needs to be a portal for the ancient truth of life. And when people come in here, they need to hear those ancient words because they still bring life. We need to hold on to that. Wherever the culture is going, sometimes it embraces it, sometimes it rejects it. It's kind of sliding away from the church. For the time will come, here's maybe where we are. The world has been like this, it goes up and down. When people will not put up with sound doctrine, instead to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn away from the truth and turn aside to myths. Oh, we have to be so careful. We live in a media-saturated culture. You can find anybody who's saying anything you want them to say. But that's not the truth. We need to listen to those who are reminding us and teaching us what God says. And sometimes that's encouraging. And sometimes it rebukes. That's when we tend to... Ever, ever, nobody has ever said to me, please stop saying that God loves me. Please stop saying that God accepts me as I am. Everybody likes that. But when I say, you know what? God's word says the way you're acting or behaving or thinking or your motives are suspect and wrong and you need to repent. Yeah? Well, I don't believe that's true. Don't we do that? I, I love when people say, that's not the God I believe in. That's an American thing, right? As if God was a buffet. And you say, you know what? I'm going to take a little love a little grace. Oh, a lot of blessing. Yeah, I'll hold off on the rebuke sauce. I just don't need that right now. And, and none, of, none of this correction. I don't need it. That's silly. God is who God is. And we need the wholeness of his truth. And just watch out. And how are you going to do this? How are you going to make sure, congregation, people of God, that the word of God is being preached and that we're not just listening to what we want to hear? You're going to have to be students of the word of God. You need to know the Word of God. And the only way to really know it is just to come up with a regular system or pattern of reading it. So that you can say, yeah, what the pastor is saying, what's being preached in my church, seems in keeping with what I read in God's Word. Or you can say, no, and I, I don't mind. I'm sure Keith will have some feedback for me this morning, you know. I was saying, oh, John, that was good, but what about this? And I love that. The congregation should be saying, you know, when I read the Word of God, John, I don't see it quite like that. That is great. We are guardians of this ancient faith. We are to keep our heads in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of evangelists, discharge the work of your ministry. We are guardians of the ancient truth of life. Church, this is our mission. Let's not get off track. It's more important than raising money. It's more important than getting things done or taking care of this business. It's holding on to the truth of God's word. When I came here as pastor, and thank you for honoring that today, some 19 years ago, starting 20 Christmases this year, the church said to me, what will make the church grow? I said, well, I don't really know, but I tell you this, if you stop trying to be all things to all people, not that they necessarily were, I didn't know the church yet, but if you stop trying to be all things to all people and ground yourself in what makes Christianity really Christianity and be true and honest and hold on to that ancient faith and hold it out, I think the church will be healthy. Final thing. Jesus is the source of truth. The church is that vehicle of truth and this church I feel so passionate about in this season right now needs to be strong and a good steward of this as much as everything else 
but so do you as individuals. This last passage this morning. In your hearts, set apart Christ as Lord. Always be ready to give reason for the hope that you have in you. But do this with gentleness and respect. In this means to an end word of God, do you know where God writes his word? Not on pages that flow off a printing press somewhere in Nashville or Michigan or China. He writes his word on our hearts. When we hear the word and we believe the word, the Holy Spirit fills us and his word becomes living in us. He writes it on our hearts. And we are his best witness and testimony. And we need to be ready. You need to be ready to share your faith. I think it's the most effective way in our culture and our generation is just by relationships. We're immediately turned off by aggressive preaching and in-your-face kind of stuff. There's a lot of people who don't really want to come to church because they're just so disconnected. It seems weird to them. But you, God has placed you in all kinds of different places and situations. Your family, your neighborhood, your friends, your school, your place of work. And you are to be a witness for Christ there. Because as much as God has called you to be a steward of your time and your talents and your financial resources and stuff, He has called you to be a good steward of the truth that He has placed in you and written in your heart. And somehow, each of us has an obligation to hold that out and to share our faith with others. And I love that last part because I think that is such great advice in our culture. You do it with gentleness and respect. I was going to say that that's something our culture respects, so I think that's eroding too, but let's try to hang on to that. Let's be gentle and respectful of others and where they're coming from, but let's also be bold and loving. The most loving thing you can do to somebody else is share with them the love of Christ. Not everyone can see it. Not everyone's going to embrace it or get it right away, but we continually hold it out. So... Individuals, men, women, boys, girls, if Christ is in you and his truth is in you, pray for opportunities where you can lovingly and gently, with respect, hold out this ancient secret, this ancient truth of life to others. It's a big part of stewardship and honestly, if all the rest went away, I would say this is probably the most important thing for us as a church and for us as individuals. Guardians of the ancient truth of life. I, I want like a sword. How about a costume? What could my costume be, right? The guardian of the truth, you know. It's what God has called us to do and to be. It's going to take His strength, His power. On this Reformation Sunday, we celebrate the church coming back to the Word of God. You know that's what changed everything. The church, and by the way, I don't like to segment out Christian history. It's all of our history. Right? The church had gotten off track. The church had lost its vision of the ancient truth and the word of God. And it got really kind of corrupt and off track. And God did a movement. Sure, Martin Luther's kind of the spearhead. But it's not a Martin Luther thing. It's a God thing. And God said, get back to the word. Use the word to refine and correct and put us back on track. So on this Reformation Sunday, as we remember how God reformed his church and brought us back to the word of God, may we continually be reforming and bringing ourselves back to the word of God, allowing it to encourage, correct, rebuke, and train, and equip us to be about the work of God. Amen? Amen. Fellow guardians, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this October, this season of stewardship, for all these thoughts and lessons on being good stewards of all that you've given us, Lord. Lord, bless your people.
in this congregation and those who are visiting with us. Lord, bless the use of their time for your glory and for the good of others. Bless the use of their talents and all you've given them for the glory of you and the good of others. Lord, bless their stuff and their money. May they use it for your glory and for the good of others. And Lord, you've entrusted us with your truth. And so Lord, bless that. May it be anchored deep in this church's culture and may it be written permanently on our hearts. And Lord, as you give us opportunity, may we hold it out to the world around us for your glory, for the good of others. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Remember the words of Jesus. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Let us now give in proportion to all the blessings God has bestowed us upon us. Let us pray. Dear God, today as we present our offerings, we also present our pledges for next year, Lord. Those that are received and those by faith that will be coming in. We know that you are the one who gives us the ability to make wealth. And Lord, we humbly and with faith believe that we can pledge this to your work and your ministry here. So receive not only these offerings, but receive these pledges with hope and faith for the year to come. Lord, use all of them for your glory, for the strengthening of your church in this time and this place, to help those in need and to spread the gospel across the street and to the ends of the earth until you come again. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
brothers and sisters, it's been good for us to gather and worship today. I'm so glad you're here today. Um, I am not going to greet you on the way out um, so I can get a piece of cake first. But also so I don't spread my germs. We'll spread the love, not the germs. But please greet one another and please join us downstairs. And uh, those who are interested in the Haiti trip, just finding out more, um, I think Taryn has a table set up in the vestry at coffee hour and we'll meet in the chapel in about 15 minutes, a quarter of. Now as you leave this place, God has gifted and entrusted you with so many things. Go forth now, empowered by His Spirit, guided by His Word, and use all that He's given you for His glory and to do good to others. Go in peace. Go and serve the Lord. Amen. After you get